Hello, everybody. Hope you're all recovering from the Christmas crafting craziness. Um, haven't made a video in a while, but I've spoken with many of you and said that I will be making new videos shortly after the new year. Um, but I wanted to hop on and tell you a quick tip about the nesting tool and to give a shout out and thank you to Katie K for using my referral code. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, so let's hop in with this nesting tool. Um, luckily for us Silhouette users, it's something that's already built into our software. I've seen other people that have to go to another uh, program to get the same feature. So what nesting is, um, is it's going to make the most of your material usage. If you're a person that tries to drag all of your shapes and objects close together so you can get as many on a board as possible, then this is going to save you a lot of time. First thing you would want to do is to set up your page um, for the size of the material you're using. And also, as you've probably found out by now, your usable space within the Glowforge depends on if you're cutting or if you're engraving and how fast you're gonna do those things. Um, I like to set my page up by clicking on this top icon here. And I usually set it at about 12 by 18, 12 by 19, something like that. And I'll be more specific if I know that I'm going to be using the full board. But for this purpose, uh, we have a few items. So as long as they're as close together, then that will be fine. So after your page size is set up, you go over here to this icon that looks like, um, I don't know, two hands holding to me. It's called the nesting panel. You click on that and you can see that this blue border has popped up. So if you leave it at the use cut area, um, that is going to set it to the size that you told it to for your page size here is usually what we're going to want because our boards are rectangular. If you want to create a circle or something, you can always do that and have your items nest within it, but then you'll want to click, uh, click use selected. Um, so anyways, for our purposes, we'll keep it here at this blue rectangle. And this here only shapes on media. If that is clicked, it means that only the shapes that are within your cutting area are going to be nested. All of this out here will remain the same. So if I click that real quick to show you, boom, all of your stuff got really close together and that's making a lot of use of your space. So now here, if you want to adjust, maybe if you think that, oh, I'm afraid these items are too close together and might get more burning or something there, then you can always increase your padding. Um, I usually don't go above four. And you can see now that you've gotten a little bit more space between these items. And if you really wanted to increase it, you can continue to do so. Um, your rotations is how much you want your items to rotate to be able to get into that best use configuration. So you can put it all the way to the max so that it can rotate any way that it wants to as long as it is close together. So if we put our padding back down to a low number again. Um, I'll just type it in and keep our rotations high. You can see that we're getting a lot of use of our space here. But honestly, I usually keep my rotations, again, not any higher than four. It's just my preference. Um, and it doesn't really sometimes make much of a difference. Now, if you wanted to have all of your objects on your page, such as even this stuff over here. I just have, you know, stuff I've been working on everywhere. You can click off of the only shapes on media box and it will pull everything into your rectangle to nest it. And since it has quite a few items, it's trying to make the best use and boom, look at all that. That was so quick, don't you think? Um, another tip that I wanna give is that, say for instance, you have two objects that are together. If I want this A to stay inside of this star shape, then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that those items are grouped together before you go doing your nesting. Because now you can see that they are together because I grouped it, but if I was to ungroup this and hit nest again, I've lost my A out of my shape. So anytime 
that you want to keep stuff together, just go ahead and make sure that they are grouped. Now, if you want to keep your common shapes kind of close to each other, um, maybe that's just a preference that you have, you can hit this align box here. And what that'll do is try to get all of your alike shapes within the same area as much as possible while still making the use of your space the greatest. Um, I hope this nesting tip will save you a lot of time and a lot of less clicking and dragging and saving more material so that we can make even more things. I hope this helps you out. Let me know in the comments and be on the lookout for those new videos after the new year. Thanks for watching.